evening, and thank you for joining me for Friday Night Ministry. You know, tonight in particular, I just want to recognize and honor all the veterans who have served in our armed forces and tell you how much I appreciate your service, your sacrifice, really being willing to go where you are called to go and take care of the needs of others before self. And tonight we're going to expand on that recognition. We know how powerful it is that people have done that service here in our military, but we also need to recognize that Christ taught us about service and sacrifice because he first showed us that way. And also to know that we have that opportunity to become veterans of service and sacrifice for God and his kingdom. Amen. We have so much respect for veterans, and we should, for their service, for their sacrifice. There's something when you say veteran that you understand the character of the person. And for you and I, for Christians around the world, we completely understand that Christ, his character, his sacrifice, how much it means for us, and how much it sets us up as a pattern to follow after. You know, we look in Hebrews 10, 10 through 14, this completely calls us out and gives us an understanding of where sacrifice comes from, because there is no other sacrifice like what Christ did. And the fact remains that there's no other sacrifice required like it ever again. Hebrews 10, 10 through 14 says, and by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his foot still. For by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. So powerful, his will, right? By that will, by that choice to sacrifice himself, he really completed a process and made powerful uh, promises and gifts available to you and I. He now sits at the right hand of God, and he's waiting for us to make his enemies his footstool, to use the power and authority that he purchased for us to make change here on this earth, right? This victory that Christ had, it cannot be undone. It is for all time. He's made us perfect forever. He's made the way to bring people, Christians, into God's kingdom, and nothing will change that. So it is an incredible act of sacrifice, and it's also an incredible cause we see called out here. We are that cause that Christ went to the cross for. And the result, the cause, is that we get to be made perfect in God's sight, right? We gain his righteousness. We also gain access to a position in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And that is something that changes the earth right now today and will forever more. And this enemy is beaten by the sacrifice in this act. We have to put him under our feet. We've got to make him the footstool, but the power and the authority has been granted by the singular sacrifice by Christ Jesus. So sacrifice, since we're talking so much about it in terms of the veteran mindset, to sacrifice and give comes really into two different forms, right? Sacrifice, the noun, the thing, the item that is actually surrendered or offered to satisfy a requirement on behalf of self or another, to sacrifice oneself, give oneself up. You, yourself, is that item being sacrificed, being given up, and you're doing it to satisfy or make sure that there is a benefit that someone else gets in the process. Sometimes we sacrifice eating that extra dessert because we want to benefit and not harm ourselves in, in the process, but to sacrifice so that others can gain. And the more people who can gain from that act of sacrifice, the better. 
So the action of that sacrifice, that verb is to actually slaughter, kill, slay, right? To give oneself up for a complete loss, for death. Being able to surrender all in order to gain the benefit. So being the sacrifice and sacrificing self, those two things go together and are culminated. They're all into one place. Christ was the sacrifice and he also sacrificed, was willing to take that position for you and I. And so here we think about what have we been willing and able to sacrifice in our lives? Where have we been willing to be the sacrifice, right? There's the physical death, and we're still walking and living here today, but there's also the spiritual side of it, sacrificing things in the physical world for a spiritual gain, to surrender to the cost that we need to give up in order to grow and learn and develop as a Christian in God's kingdom. See, this gets called out pretty quickly by Christ, and he was so direct in the way he ministered to his disciples. Yes, he loved them deeply, but he also taught them, and they really enjoyed following him, and he had to say, I need to give you a little bit of perspective here. I have to remind you that there's a cost that goes with this lifestyle. And you're seeing that if you're going to follow me around, if you're going to be my disciple, then you're going to experience some of the same things. People aren't always going to love you. They are going to hate you. They're not going to understand what's going on. To stand out and be peculiar in this world has some cost to it. To give up what you do on your Sundays in order to be at church. To give away so others are blessed. There are costs that come with being a disciple. Now, a disciple is simply a follower of Christ. And we always think about following after his pattern, but also a disciple was a learner. They learned from the teacher. They wanted to understand how the teacher was thinking and feeling and what motivated him. So as disciples, we should be passionate about getting that same understanding and seeking to get behind the mind of Christ and then push our minds to think in the same way. So he says to them in Luke 14, 25 through 33, Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Again, this sounds very harsh. These are firm words hate and cannot be. All of them are clamoring, saying, I'm going to follow you, Jesus. I'm going to follow you, Jesus. And he's saying, wait a minute. If you don't detest other things, if you can't love less some of the things you already have in your life in order to give following me the first position, you cannot be my disciple. He said, I know the cost that sets before me, and I am willing to pay it. I'm going to challenge you and ask, are you willing to pay the price that it takes to carry your cross, to say, I represent God the Father. I represent the kingdom of God. Will you be able to hold that up at all times to truly be my disciple? Because that's all I'm going to teach you. That's all I'm going to show you. And that's what you have to be prepared to learn if you're going to follow me. He goes on with, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Really saying, I understand, yes, the love is here. The grace is here. I'm going to pull you in. But once you come in, you have to be prepared to know that there are going to be some costs. So some things that you give up in the process, right? We don't always think about it. We don't always like the concept that there are costs that go along with our faith. But to be a follower, it comes into play. And we know what that means. We give up certain things to live and look and sound different than the world sounds, 
right? One of the things I've noticed in counseling people, they were like, I just love the love of God. And when I got saved, I was so excited about that, but I wasn't prepared for the conscience, for having the Holy Spirit inside me now convict me of sin. I'm more conscious of sin after being saved than before. And of course that makes sense because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you that is pulling you towards God's purpose purpose that is reminding you and it's good to be convicted of that sin but not condemned of it because Christ died for it so part of that cost is truly not being your own to do just what you want all the time without having a conscience about it right so we have to start laying a whole new foundation and he's saying if you're going to step in to not just being a believer in Christ but a true disciple you have to know where this road is going to take you you are going to have to know the costs that come with time and experience and develop development as being a christian in the kingdom of god so suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. So to kind of focus this consider the war piece. He's actually staging, if you've got 10,000, you have to consider whether you're able to fight against 20,000. Now, you might think, obviously, I cannot, but this is where faith always comes in, right? Part of being a disciple, Christ never considered the odds in terms of just physical numbers. He knew, is God the Father's will with them? Are the angelic hosts with them? Can he call them down at any moment? But being a disciple means learning from him. And if we're always focused just on what we can physically see, then we're not going to enter that war. And we're going to go ahead and ask for terms of peace. We're going to stay subject to the enemy that we allow conquering us. But we have to take the time like Christ did to pull off, pray, build ourselves up and set our hearts and mind to go into a battle. Even if we think we physically have less with us, go into that battle with the confidence that we have more and we can be victorious. This is just another piece that he's saying, you have to sit down and consider, are you able, do you have the faith to be a disciple and to walk? Because you're going to go into challenging face, places and you have to know that you are going to be okay. You have to give up control of what you think you know. You have to give up control of having everything in your hand because you're going to have to rely on faith. That is what it's going to take to be my disciple. Otherwise, we're just going to live in peace with the enemy, live subject to his pressure upon us, the restrictions the enemy wants to place upon us. Otherwise, a disciple, you're going to prepare yourself to fight no matter what those odds look like. Okay? You know, think about uh, Matthew 4 and Jesus when he was in the wilderness after he had fasted and he comes out and the enemy wants to hit him up with, see, I can give you all this. I'll make it easy for you. And Christ considered the cost of letting the enemy take care of him. And he says, I'm not going to receive any of that. I am going to hold fast to what God has told me and not make it uh, giving away the authority that God has given me in order to reach something less that the world has to offer. So from these scriptures, we can absolutely see that there is a whole list of costs that come with being a disciple, with being a follower, a learner of Christ, somebody who stands out as part of the peculiar nation in this world, who is ready to fight the good fight of faith, who's ready to be a veteran of the things of the kingdom. And those costs, just in the set of scriptures, was talking about choices that impact your family relations and those who don't have Christian family members, those who weren't raised Christian, you understand how you have to battle to be different than what your family might be drawing you towards or wants you to be. You also have choices then of what you value because we're told seek first the kingdom of God in his righteousness. And that drives the decisions that we make every day. We have choices about what we do with our life, our time, our talents, because we were given those to use them 
for good, for others' gain and profit, and not just our own. We have a choice to follow after Christ's example, and we show that by sacrificing and being submissive and loving and being resilient and being bold and all the things that he was in the face of everything that challenged him. We also have the choice to pick up our cross and let it represent who we serve, right? When people go into battle, they are holding the flag of who they are fighting for, which country or nation they represent. And we pick up our cross and we fight boldly to represent the kingdom of God and our Lord and Savior. So we show who we stand for in word and deed. The cost also, it says that became that commitment to build properly, to start laying a foundation, knowing that if I take the first step or I put down the first story, I'm going to go to a second story and a third story, and I'm going to keep developing and learning so that I can follow Christ my Lord even better. It's also a commitment to finish what we start, to stay the course. We all know the Lord has uh, told us to do certain things, has pushed us in certain directions, and we need to finish that. And there's cost to finishing what the Lord has called us to do. The cost also include a commitment to fight battles on his behalf, spiritually, making a change happen in this world that not just we benefit from, others benefit, truly being an intercessor on behalf of those here on this earth, right? We don't want to be at peace with the enemy and let him have too much of our life or the lives of those around us that we love and that we have an assignment to protect and care for. We also have this commitment and this cost to give up everything that keeps you from following him. And we know there's places and things that are hard to give up, but yet we become more selfless. We become less selfish in this process. And there's a cost to that. You know, it makes me think of baptism. We know that he died on the cross for us, but it also says we too, right, are baptized in Christ Jesus and that we die to the old and rise fresh with the new. We're always in this process of less of me and more of you, being that old, uh, a new creation. So the old is always passing away. And there's cost to let yourselves be vulnerable and open and stripped down. So truly the old dies off. We sacrifice holding on to the old in order to receive something new. We move forward for the cause of Christ. See, veterans of the kingdom, that's what you and I have the opportunity to be. And a veteran is simply a person who has had a long experience in a particular field, right? We always think about the military, but there's veterans in the nursing industry who know very well how to care for people and are always abreast of the newest uh, techniques and what they can learn, right? There's a lot of people who have to do continuing education credits. We have that same opportunity to continue to learn and grow in this field of our Christian faith and what God has called us to do. Ultimately, a veteran, we always think, especially at this time of the year, of a person who has served in the armed forces in defense of a country. But we are serving in the armed forces because there is a power and a force that we are behind for the kingdom of God. And every time we use our influence and we stand up and we fight for God's cause and for his kingdom and for those around us to become part of his kingdom, then we are in the Lord's army and we are building our own reputation, our own history as a veteran in the kingdom of God. And hopefully the veteran character is developing in us, right? That veteran character is one who surrenders to the cause. Put that cause first, even if that costs for them. Someone who will make sacrifices, personal sacrifices of time. Persons who will take on the mission and complete the mission for that cause. And ultimately, a veteran has counted the cost and makes the choice to do it for the benefit of others. So what for what can be gained for the cause, even if there is a personal cost. See, we see this throughout scripture. God is definitely 
setting us up, again, teaching us as a follower of Christ, if we're going to learn of him and be in that pattern, he has showed us how to sacrifice, how to be a soldier for his cause. And we see scriptures like Romans 12, 1 and 2 that says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, God's mercy, everything that he has done for you, everything that his mercy has established for the cause of Christ here on this earth and the benefit of others to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God, what God's will is his good, pleasing and perfect will. Then notice that it's talking about giving your body, offering your body. You're now, of course, your body is shows up and brings you there, right? Your body is what is used to serve. And he says, use it as present it as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Present your body available to do the work that God has asked you to do. And notice that he's saying whatever you do with your body is an act of worship. It shows who you worship when you use the gifts and talents and life that you've been given to serve others. In presenting or offering your body as a living sacrifice is a true and proper act of worship to God, saying, I am here, I am presenting myself to serve your cause here on this earth because I serve you, I worship you. Also, he goes further into now our mind, right? It's not just our bodies. We have to renew our minds and our mind because we are learning of and disciples of Christ are always trying to learn more about what Christ would have us to do. Learn more about the cause, right? What is the cause of our commander in chief? How do we best protect the kingdom of God? How do we take our role in this kingdom of God and transform our minds so that we greatly understand what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will for this world, for you and I individually. That's the amazing thing. When he develops us, when he teaches us how we can serve others, he's also teaching us, and he blesses us with his perfect will in our lives as well. Part of the soldier's sacrifice is also called out to us in Hebrews 13, 15 through 16 says, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name, and do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. We sing that, that we bring sacrifices of praise, and <laughs> that sacrifice of praise, right, means we're killing off those thoughts that are harmful, that are detrimental. We're killing off the doubt. We're killing off all those things that get in the way of simply praising his name and recognizing him as good. Notice that the fruit of the lips openly profess. So anything that is getting away from us, openly professing his name and sharing about his goodness, we have to get rid of those things, get past our own flesh, get past our own fears and share the goodness of the Lord. It says, don't forget to do good and share with others. And the more we do that, the more we're a positive witness and we praise his name, the more God is pleased. That is what influences our rank in the army of the Lord. We know we need to speak life because death and life are in the power of the tongue. And so we're speaking hope and we are sharing the reason we serve, the reason we're part of the army of the Lord. We're sharing his goodness. And as we do that, we are building the kingdom of God. But notice that he recognizes sometimes that's a sacrifice. Sometimes that doesn't come easy and we have to fight to get ourselves to that place so that it can flow openly and easily from our mouths. The soldier sacrifice is also called out in 1 Peter 2, 4 through 5. It says, as you come to him, the living stone rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. 
It's a sacrifice of the flesh to become more spiritual, to let the Holy Spirit inside of you occupy more in more space so that you are a spiritual house where the quickening of the Holy Spirit inside of you is able to flow out and provide those words of life and hope. And so there's a natural joy, right? Because the Holy Spirit has all the fruits and the joy and the love and the goodness of the Holy Spirit should be filling your spiritual house. But again, you have to sacrifice to give that Holy Spirit more space inside of you. Also, he's talking about this uh, reality that as we become more of the spiritual house, then we be get to become more of a holy priesthood. We know Jesus is the high priest. But as our role, and the more spiritual we are, the more in tune we are to the Holy Spirit, the more we get to intercede and intervene and pray for others. We become intercessors who care about others and sacrifice our prayer time, not about just what we want, but we give our prayer time towards what we know others need. That's where we start filling that role and following again as a disciple, a follower of Christ, who cared more about others than his own well-being, knowing he was prepared to sacrifice his time to pray for others. He was able to sacrifice what he needed to give to others. We fall into that pattern of a priesthood when we allow the Holy Spirit inside of us to develop us so that we can war for others and we can use our heavenly link to accomplish great things. That as we mature in the Lord, as we take on our veteran status becomes more of a natural thing for you and I. Another piece of the soldier sacrifice, I think we see in Philippians 2, 14 through 17. It says, do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. We want to reflect on the outside what God has done for us on the inside. Be children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. Notice this opportunity, this choice, right? To stay the course, to serve God well is going to make us shine, make us stand out. Being able to hold firmly to the word of God, I believe, I trust in you, God, I hold firmly. That is how I stay the course. That is how I fight the fight and I stay true to the cause. That is what gives me a veteran status. And then being able to boast at the end of the time, I didn't run away from the battle. I didn't uh, compromise what I stood for. All my labor that I did, I did and I see good results from says, but even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you, right? Poured out. There's sometimes we are just letting go of ourselves. We pour out and give sacrifice and service. And truly, this is shared here in Philippians by Paul. He realized he was pouring out and giving up himself and all these acts of sacrifice he had to give up and let old things die and serve other people. And he's saying, when I see that same sacrifice and others being poured out from their faith, then I know that you too, in the end, will be able to say, I didn't run. I grew. I stayed faithful to the cause of Christ. And my labor, all that I did, it was not in vain. It produced a great result, right? Christ is here to help us, just like God the Father helped him. How God the Father was there with him every step of the way. You know, every day we have this cause to show the world God's love and his grace and his peace, even when it is hard. So sometimes we have to let him heal us and let him train us so we can do all the things that God wants us to do so that our laboring will be fruitful and productive, right? If you go in to fight a battle, you want to be able to win that war. You want to be able to accomplish and find that victory 
in the end. And each day, there's a little bit of pouring out yourself as a, a drink offering, watering other people, giving up some things for benefit of others so that you can learn and realize the more we give of ourselves, the more God blesses us. And ultimately, while we're talking about the sacrifice that God has called us today, that in scripture, he keeps saying, you know, let go of that old, let it die off so that you can rise anew, become more and more of a veteran in the things of God. Mark 12, 32, 33 sums this up for us saying the sacrifice is important, but God wants something even more. It says, well said, teacher, the man replied, you are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding or mind, and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. He's saying that ultimately it's not about setting up your day to keep sacrificing, keep sacrificing and make it about the sacrifices themselves. He's saying, make it about the love. Because if you love him with all your heart, with all your understanding or mind, and with all your strength, if you love him, he's going to be sharing his love back with you. And the more you understand the depth of that love, the more he's going to take care of you, right? Sometimes we have to fight to get rid of all those things that get in the way of knowing that he loves us. All those things that compromise our belief of how much he loves us. That is really what the war is that we need to fight, is to fight against all those things that get in the way from a pure love between you and your God. So be a veteran in that. Fight to win that war of understanding how much God loves you, because when God's love transforms you, it makes it so easy for you to sacrifice, right? The love of God allows us to surrender. It builds trust. It allows us to sacrifice. It is how we endure the cost. We don't just take the cost upon ourselves to be burdened by them. We take the cost on out of love, just like that was the reason why God sent his son to die on the cross for us. It was out of love. And that was the reason Christ willingly went to the cross, was out of love, so that we could be in a love relationship with each other. And a veteran goes out and fights the fight because they love their country. They love the cause. They love the people they are protecting back home. We get to be that same way when we stand up and fight for the cause of Christ. We truly have been given a heritage of sacrifice. Ephesians 5, 1 through 2 says, follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Walk every day in the way of love. Give up yourself where it makes sense as a sacrifice of God. Do these things out of love for God. Do these things out of love for other people. Take on a cost in order to have someone else benefit. And that in itself will make you a veteran in the kingdom of God. It will make you a disciple, one who is following after and doing the things Christ has been teaching us to do. So we are definitely in a military family if we're in the family of God, right? Our military family with God has a family tradition of service and of sacrifice, and all of that is motivated by love. John 15, 13 says, greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You know, so for this Veterans Day, I hope you, you thank every veteran who has served in the military or armed forces here on this earth. But then also think about your role, your rank, your influence. If you have been somebody who has stood up and fought for the kingdom of God, think about the tradition of service and sacrifice that you have been living out as a follower of Christ. And if you can see your life reflected in that, you are a veteran and you should be celebrated this Veterans Day as well. Notice that a veteran is one who lays down their life in order to stand up for a cause. 
And a veteran is one who surrenders all and hopes that others may gain. A veteran is one who fights until the battle is won to keep another war from beginning. And a veteran is one who humbles themselves to serve others and somehow through that act becomes the most deserving to be raised up, just like Christ our Lord. And ultimately, a veteran is one who has counted the cost and still made the choice, knowing what those costs would be. So thank you all for your service to the kingdom of God. And thank you for sacrificing for things that I don't even know you had to give up, for benefits I didn't even know I received from your hands. So whether it has been prayer, whether it has been kind words, whether you wrote books that I read that inspired me, whether you uh, moved your car out of the way in order to make room when I was driving down the road one day. Thank you. And if you truly stood up and you have fought on foreign soils on behalf of this nation, I thank you for that as well, knowing that most of you have been moved by a faith and an understanding of sacrifice that came from Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, veterans. Be blessed. As for me and my house, we will serve